a Wendy's Frosty is something special. And for a limited time, a Frosty is just 50 cents. An American classic for a classic price. It's not quite a milkshake, not quite an ice cream cone. It's definitely chocolate or vanilla. That choice is on you. Use a spoon or a french fry. Anything goes. A Frosty makes summer special. Yep, there's nothing quite like a Frosty. And there's nothing quite like this deal. A Frosty for 50 cents. Get yours before this deal melts away. Small Frosty at participating Wendy's for a limited time. Blog Talk Radio. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Franchise Interviews, where we're asking the entrepreneur who owns one. I'm your host, Marty McDermott, with my co-host, Don Johnson. And if you've ever dreamed of owning your own business, then you've come to the right place. We have a great show this morning. We're meeting with David and Stuart Pykoff, the founders of the Games View franchise concept. And David and Stuart launched the mobile video game theater franchise in Austin, Texas in 2007. And to date, they've sold more than 25 franchises and plan to have more than 100 up and running by the end of 2009, and that's coming up in segment two of Franchise Interviews. So stick around because we got a great show. Franchise Interviews. For over two years now, Franchise Interviews has been giving you an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship. Through our website, FranchiseInterviews.com, where you can hear and read interviews, as well as get tips from some of the most successful sources in franchising. And our weekly franchise radio show, where each week you get to hear a new interview with franchisors, franchisees, franchise authors, experts, and attorneys. And our free franchise newsletter, which is a must-read for anyone looking to buy a franchise. And don't forget to listen to our podcast, Great Quotes in Franchising. For more information, go to FranchiseInterviews.com or call us at 610-905-2919. That's 610-905-2919. Need a business loan? Talk to Diamond Financial Services, the experts in franchise financing nationwide. Whether you're looking to start a franchise, acquire an existing franchise, or expand your territory through opening new locations, Diamond Financial stands by your side start to finish. From pre-qualification to packaging and presenting your application to securing a financial commitment and through the loan closing process, Diamond Financial is there. While you're waiting, thousands of others are making their financial dreams come true. Don't wait any longer. Pre-qualify now by completing a confidential, no-obligation financial analysis. Let's face it, traditional banks just aren't in the business of financing small business. At Diamond Financial, we specialize in securing franchise loans from $100,000 to $3 million and equipment leasing up to $150,000. Let us help you get started. Go to www.FranchiseFunding.net or call 877-508-2274. That's FranchiseFunding.net, 877-508-2274. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Franchise Interviews, where we're asking the entrepreneur who owns one. I'm your host, Marty McDermott, with my co-host, Don Johnson, and if you've ever dreamed of owning your own business, and you've come to the right place. How are you doing today, Don? Welcome back. Doing fine, Marty. How, how are you this week? Good, good. Once again, a week has gone by uh, very fast, you know, and uh, here we are again, doing a, yeah. another show, you know. <laughs> what are we in the second? They just keep coming, yeah. Yeah, second week, uh, second week of March, you know, and we have... Uh, I know you're going to make the announcement, the big franchise show next week. We call it the Super Bowl of Franchising, don't we? Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Consider it like our home show because right. uh, it's within driving distance of us. It's close enough by, yeah. When are you heading down? Are you heading down on Thursday night or Friday? or? Yeah, Thursday because um, – Usually after 
a long day work of uh, <laughs> and then you drive down to D.C. and I leave a little early, make the drive down there, help set up the booth. They, they, people who are exhibiting the companies, mm-hmm. the suppliers, and the franchisors have, have to be set up by that Thursday, and then the show uh, is Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Right. So you're doing a lot of standing on your feet. You must feel uh, fatigued by Sunday, I imagine. Yeah, it's yeah, it's not. It's it's. Uh, I mean, you know, we, we've talked about it in the past. I mean, I I really like doing it. Get to. Yeah. Uh, meet for the first time people I've been working with for a year or two, the franchisors, and and see existing clients, and then see a lot of my supplier friends, a lot of uh, uh, people that we mm-hmm. help advertise and promote the services, uh, people I, uh, that I've known for years. So that's why I like doing it. And might as well just mention to people it's March 20th to the 22nd down at the Washington Convention Center. It's the International Franchise Expo. It's one of the top shows of the year. Mm-hmm. And people wanting information, go to ifeinfo.com to get the times and uh, directions and information on that. The shows must have, uh, they've changed a bit for me now, you know what I mean, being that we've been doing the radio show for over two years. You know, I think we're on our, God, today's probably like our 110th show. I've even lost track, you know. Yeah, but right. It's just amazing, though, I mean, the relationships that we've built over time. And, right. Uh, you know, you, now, now you have this semi-celebrity uh, status, you know. You walk around and people know who you are, you know. It's like, there's Don Johnson. It's it's the same with you, Marty. Don't 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 cut yourself <laughs> short. There you go. You it just know me a little more because uh, of well, well, you've been in the franchise industry longer than I have. I guess uh, so. Yeah. But, but I'm just uh, you know just being in financing and working nationwide for for, for a bunch of years. Uh, you know. Uh, right. Right. Uh, yeah, but this is I mean this has been a lot of fun for me. You know I mean again just you know you and I were talking earlier before the show. You know just talking about our first show that we did. You know. Right. A few years ago with PB Loco. You know, we had Ken Carey and Joe Dean on the show. and uh, had five people on the show. Yeah. Five people on the show at one time. And I said, you know, we haven't done that ever since that moment. And it wasn't because it was a bad show. It was a good show. It was just uh, we've never had that opportunity, you know. So it's going to be nice to uh, speak to David and Stuart today at the same time, you know, having two siblings. And, you know, I was thinking earlier before the show, I think this is, and I could be wrong, the first time we've had two siblings on the show at the same time, we've had, right. um, I think, what, have, have we had daughter, father? No, that was cousin subs, but uh, the dad wasn't on the show. Right. I, th- uh, I think you might be right, first time having uh, first time having brothers on. Yeah, so that must be pretty interesting. I know we'll talk to them about that as well, you know, what that, you know, what is that like working with your brother? Uh, I've interviewed husband and wife franchisees for our newsletter. I don't know if right. I've ever had them on the show. But, uh, yeah, it is always interesting, you know, because uh, probably both of them have their, their, their set of strengths that they, you well, know. Hopefully they have a good relationship. And and, and, <laughs> and they like each other. Well, I'm sure they do because <laughs> it sounds like uh, Games to You is doing very well. So I was, uh, you know, on their website last night, and I said, wow, what a great concept, you know. And uh, right. uh, it's just amazing, you know, and you and I have spoken about this in the past, how birthday parties have certainly changed you know, from when you and I were kids, you know, where we used to right. go bowling or I think my parents would take us, like, to a pizza place or McDonald's or something, you know. and uh, Or just have it at home where you're playing pin the pan on the donkey <laughs> and then go. blowing out some candles. Like, for all, my twins' uh, five-year birthday coming up uh, in a yeah. couple of months, we're, we're, we're going to bounce you. Uh, that's right. That's, the franchise. That's a big that's – a, that's a pretty big gig, you know. They should give you a discount now for plugging them, so, <laughs> all right. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, that that that's that's exciting, and and birthdays will never be the same for you, I suspect. You know, I mean, right? Um, you know, and now that you got twins, well, it's nice that you have twins, though, that you could, let's say, kill two birds with one stone. But you know, I mean, that you have it just on the one day, right? You know, you don't have to do it twice during a year. So, that's yeah, I, I didn't really think about that, but you're right. I'm always thinking, well, it's. Well, yeah, it's, it's not really costing more. Right, uh, and right. I think about it because we're just renting out the one place. But yeah, I see your point in general. Don't have to always celebrate stuff twice. Yeah, absolutely. So, but I'm uh, not gonna be looking forward to when they go off to college at the same time with that bill. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. There you go. You know. So, so what do we got going on today, Don? And uh, I'll, I'll kind of give you a hint as far as what we got going on over the next uh, several weeks. Yeah. Well, uh, like you mentioned, David and Stuart Pykoff, co-founders of Games to You. Mm-hmm. Um. Founded in Austin, Texas. That's right. Have sold more than 25 franchises, and they have pretty uh, big goals. Uh, the goal is to have uh, upwards of 100 or more uh, right. by the end of the year. So it's like they're getting a lot of interest and doing well. And they'll tell us all about 
the franchise and uh, how things are going. So we're you know, looking forward to having them on shortly. Yeah, absolutely. Here's some shows coming up, and I know you're familiar with some of these franchises. Uh, we have Ducks coming up. You know, we had, I don't want to say we had Ducks on the show a long time ago, but we did have Service Brands International on the show. And, you know, we did mention Ducks at the time, but it was just like a five minutes right. discussion, you know. So yeah. this is going to be interesting to have Ducks on our show. Um, coming up. We also have that interesting concept. Um, I think you might be familiar with these guys on Christmas decor and nighttime decor. Have you ever heard of them? I've heard of them, but not too familiar. Yeah, it looks like it's founded by Blake Smith in 1986, also in Lubbock, Texas, uh, as a common sense solution to fill an off-season void and uh, provide year-round work for employees of his lawn care company, Quality Lawn Care. His Christmas decor quickly emerged as the company's number one overall profit center accounting for almost half of its profits. Today, more than 375 Christmas decor locations operate in 48 states and Canada with more than 50,000 consumer and commercial customers with plans to open locations in more than 100 new markets through yeah. franchise expansion in selective communities. That's pretty interesting, isn't it? I didn't realize yeah. that they were that big, you know? And, right. Uh, I guess they're also affiliated with another one called Nighttime Decor, which we're going to be discussing. So Nighttime Decor was also established in Lubbock, Texas, and pretty much a similar concept. So, again, we'll have Blake talk about, uh, you know, that whole franchise system. He could do it a lot better than I can, you know. And, uh, uh, of course, we have um, a lot of other great shows. We're going to have Rita's back on the show uh, sometime in probably like towards the end of April. we got Big Mouth uh, advertising coming up, you know. So we right. have a bunch of things, uh, exciting things that, that, are, that are going to take place over the next several months. So. Right. Uh, really looking forward to that, but also really looking forward to uh, next week's franchise show, you know, and just uh, meeting a lot of the uh, guests that have been on our show. I'm going to say, take lots of pictures, by the way. Okay. Um, you know, so we can actually post that up on our website, and uh, maybe you and I can get a picture together, because to get you and I in the same location, <laughs> in the same place, has been, yeah. has been a struggle, which is amazing, you know, it, it's... How, how, you know, people wonder how we do the show, you know, and it's just right. here I am in Pennsylvania and you're in New Jersey and, uh, right. you know, and, and the show has just turned out to be this big thing. So it really is amazing how technology has had this uh, wonderful impact. I remember when Franchise Time did the article on us uh, within the first year of doing the show. Yeah. I liked how they said once the show's over, Don Johnson just opens his door and continues his financing business. And I go take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the behind the scenes of, of, of franchise interviews, you know. And I said one day we'll actually film it, you know, and, right. and show someone a behind the scenes look at, at franchise interviews and what goes on, you know, uh, for the preparation for the show because we do a lot of preparation, you know. And there is a lot of interesting behind the scene moments that we've had, you know. Uh, uh, that makes it really interesting, you know. So sometimes people think that it was just like a one-hour show. You know, you call in and that's yeah. it, you know. But it's 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 not that way at all, you know. And now we have this library of like 110 hours of shows you can hear, you know, on franchiseinterviews.com. It's really quite amazing, and our listenership has just uh, uh, grown exponentially. It's just amazing what what's happened. And the website's updated, uh, franchiseinterviews.com. We've got Go Franchise giving Go that franchise. support. and uh, Absolutely. Our show page on Blog Talk Radio looks fantastic, you know. So it's just uh, um, we have some new sponsors that, that, that we're going to have on the yeah. show in the next couple of weeks as well. So it's just uh, it's just been an exciting time. So yeah. so enough about ourselves. I know you had some interesting articles uh, that you wanted yeah. to discuss. Here's something, Marty. USA Today by Marilyn Adams, the economy is brutal, but their business booms. I mean, there's so much negativeness out there today with right. the economy and and this. I mean, you, you know, uh, when reading the paper, watching TV, it's all kind of tough and gets a little tiring after a while. But <laughs> here, here's an article. It starts off uh, amid the worst economic conditions in 70 years, sales of sweet, fluffy pastries made by James Skinner Baking of Omaha are hot, hot, hot. Hmm. I like the way that starts. I like that. It's, it's, Family-owned Skinner Baking saw its 2008 sales revenue rise 18% from 07. In December, sales jumped a record 25%. The firm, founded in 1911, bakes coffee cakes, 
fruit-filled Danish cinnamon buns, and other time-honored goodies sold at supermarkets nationwide. Skinner Ovens are working six days a week, and the firm is hiring to keep up with the demand. This is comfort food, says Audie Keaton, Skinner's vice president. Instead of going out to breakfast, I think families are staying home and eating Danish. Skinner's among several types of businesses that are bucking the economy's downward spiral, flourishing not just in spite of the recession but because of it. Even as the nation's automakers, big banks, retailers, and others are laying off hundreds of thousands of workers and fighting for survival, some companies, large and small, quietly are setting sales records and even expanding because they provide products of, or services that worried, cost-obsessed consumers are willing to pay for. A few of the recession's beneficiaries are big public companies with household names, Walmart, McDonald's, Family Dollar. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Those are... Uh, you know, discount type places, McDonald's, discount food, uh, dollar stores. I'm sure are doing fine. Walmart, of course, uh, very uh, um, successful. They earned profits last year, and their stock prices soared because they kept doing what they do well, selling stuff that everyone needs cheaply. But many businesses that are thriving during a recession are not big or famous. They are smaller, mid-sized companies with few levels of management that can make changes quickly. Says Mark Perry, an economics professor at the University of Michigan. Uh, The role of entrepreneurs might be even more important during a recession, he says. Their ability to be nimble and innovative and adapt to change become key advantages. History seems to bear that out. Many long-standing businesses and jobs have been created during uh, and right after a downturn. And it says Monopoly, which owner Hasbro says is the world's most popular board game, by the way, my favorite game, yeah, uh, I liked it up until my wife beat me a couple uh, <laughs> times ago. Was patented that game was patented during the Great Depression. Uh, Microsoft, oh. uh, which made co-founder Bill Gates the world's richest man, was launched in 1975 after the 1970s recession. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, during the last recession in 2001-02, the U.S. economy lost nearly 2.7 million jobs. The SBA uh, reports, but new and existing businesses with fewer than 20 employees gained over 800,000 jobs during that period. Wow. Hard times seem to spawn many one-person businesses, more so uh, than, than in good times. But as the U.S. began to emerge from a downturn early this decade, one million more people launched businesses in 03 than in 02, a 5.7% rise. Wow. The bulk of those are home-based businesses such as consultants, people selling on email, eBay independent contractor, says Brian Head, economist for SBA's Office of Advocacy. Uh, such businesses can be born out of necessity by men and women who lose their jobs or just need to boost their household income. Interesting. So even amid, uh, amid all the gloom and doom today, business success stories are popping up, often reflecting America's growing uh, frugality. And among them, uh, they talk about – here's uh, here's a business It says – says many housing related businesses from builders to bathroom renovators are suffering or even closing but tiny bathroom magic of fairfax virginia is coming off the best year that they've ever had says owner jeff miller he says 08 revenue jumped about 75 percent compared to the previous year he feels um and he works alone uh, or with a few helpers can make a bathroom look nearly new for a fraction of what it costs to remodel when the economy wow. goes down my business takes off he says and it says here, uh, it says Dallas-based Interstate Batteries, a franchise with 125 retail stores nationwide, seems to have little in common with Bathroom Magic. But Interstate is benefiting from the same do-it-yourself, cost-cutting fever sweeping consumers. The 56-year-old private company sells batteries not only for cars and trucks, but also for power tools, hearing aids, cell phones, cameras, laptop computers, toys, and other devices. Uh, Interstate's retail stores called All Battery Centers sell batteries that people can install on their own uh, or customers can pay to have them installed. October and December were the best months for revenue and profits in their company's history, says Mickey Elam, vice president of Interstate Batteries. The company owned 43 new stores last year. They opened 43 new stores. Uh, now has 125 in uh, 41 states. Um, with the recession, people are not upgrading to new products, whether it's cars or laptops. Instead, they are trying to extend the life of their products. Mm. It's interesting. Yeah, we've we've and we've it's been a pretty common theme over the last six months, hasn't it? You know, people talking about that. You know, whether it's been like cars. Uh, again, I'm going to have to go back into my memory, but you know, what was it one eight hundred uh, radiator? Right. Uh, he was big on that. Wasn't didn't he say that people are taking keeping their cars 
a lot longer today, so right, you know, and, and it's more of a chance there's going to be needing repair work. So exactly, their companies and automotive franchises are probably doing pretty good during during these times. Yeah, we and we've heard some clever terms as well. Um, the one that comes to my mind is um, I, I remember the word staycation, where people aren't going on vacation as much anymore. Right, you know, they're staying home and they're doing things like improving their house, you know, or you know, putting the money into uh, you know. Fixing, like, like you said, a bathroom or something like that. You know, it's like uh, we had Shelf Genie on the show, and yeah. so, sometimes people can have that service if they're preparing their house to sell or just deciding to stay and, hey, let's fix it up and, and right. just make it easier and uh, make better use of our space, and that's where a franchise like uh, Shelf Genie comes in. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, I, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. You know, I mean, you put your house on the market today, I mean, it's probably going to be on the market a long time. Why not? You know, just invest in, in, into your home, you know. I know right. we're going to have a lot of work done, you know, over the next year. So, uh, yeah, it does. It, it makes a lot of sense. It's interesting. I was thinking of the quote, though, that you said from the one gentleman with the bathroom. Wait, are, are they a franchise, son? No, I, I, well, I'm not sure if they are. Yeah, no, I, I know Interstate just, Batteries is. I'm not sure about Yeah, uh, Interstate bathroom. Batteries is. I've never heard of that other company before. It was just interesting, their quote. It's funny, like some of the people, how they say, oh, you know, when the we, we do great when the economy's bad. But then right. <laughs> you wonder what's going to happen. When it gets good again, you know, right. what are they going to say, you know, so it, it, it is interesting. But, no, it, it does make a lot of sense. Um, you know, there are a lot of, you know, and, and use the word, too, you spoke about comfort foods and things like that. You know, I, from what I understand, I, you know, studying the recession is, is quite interesting how some businesses do increase. Like, um, um, peop, more people, from what I understand, are going to the movies, you know, and things like that. Right. Um, you know, kind of like a, a, an escape you know, it, it, that's why maybe bowling's thing. making a comeback uh, uh, because it's, it's fun. Yeah, I never thought it's not about that, that expensive, yeah. and right. I think bowling had a real big downturn. So they're probably gaining a whole lot of new fans nationwide, young kids who never really like maybe did it that much because there aren't really m- m- uh, many bowling alleys around. But I guess uh, yeah, that's true. You know, it's funny because and and I, you know I know in New Jersey where you are, I know a lot of them closed down. Um, you know, and, and they attributed that to. The smoking ban, you know, because if you thought of the typical, now this is when when you and I were kids. If you went back and you went into a bowling alley, you know, 20 years ago, it was pretty much like smoke filled, you know, and right. uh, you know, you had this stereotype of someone who bowls, you know, and I think right. it's changed a lot today from where it is, uh, you know, 20 years ago. So it it, it is quite interesting, you know. Um, yeah, and I, I've been to a few places uh, recently, uh, and you know, more more bells and whistles, a lot more color and more fun. And uh, yeah, I've so. heard that like all the laser light things and things like that. Probably know. just a matter of time before you know, bowling alleys will franchise their concept. There might even be one now. I'm not sure, but uh, that's probably going to happen. If there is, I don't know about it. You know, if I haven't heard of it. You know, so that's kind of interesting. But yeah, I mean, that's, that there's a lot of positive there. You know, from what you said. You know, I mean, if you just go back in time and you know, you see some of the great concepts that came out of you know, uh, depressions or recessions and things like that. So, I mean, it's happening now as right. we're speaking. We've seen a lot of – I've seen a lot of creativity, you know, in the articles that we read on the show. Right. You know, people just thinking outside the box and being a lot more competitive, you know, and, and, and that competitive yeah. – Spirit is, is is definitely alive. So well, it's just a lot of opportunity now. I mean, you know, look at the people who are out there trying to find retail space. The the deals they're getting, people looking to get oh, business loans. These are the lowest rates in five years. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are businesses going out of business, but that means someone maybe starting up a business maybe has less competition. So you know, oh, it's a yeah. unique type yeah. of uh, um, uh, opportunities. Yeah, I've seen some to. killer locations. Um, Connie and I were shopping several weeks ago. In uh, so Flemington, New Jersey. I know you're familiar. With, right. Have you been to Flemington? Yeah. Just the outlets there. Right. I mean, there was there was a lot of space available in those outlets. I said, my God. I mean, you know, five six years ago, you couldn't even touch, you know, right. any any of those locations. You know, so it really is amazing. There has there is certainly opportunity out there today if you look for it and you keep your eyes open. Right. So it is kind of interesting. Uh, okay, uh, here's something. Uh, uh, I guess you're finished, right? I'm done. I'm done talking. <laughs> <laughs> here's well, yeah, something. If, yeah, yeah. Do you have another quick one? or? Uh, yeah, here's something. Entrepreneurs take their chances. March 8th, business owners cautious but build for a better future by Esteban Para out of the News Journal. 
Uh, it says, across the country, stocks are plunging, factories are closing, and workers are losing their jobs in record numbers. Again, more negativeness. Uh, but in Delaware, a state we don't talk about much, <laughs> some no, owners don't. of new businesses are optimistic. Drew Smith, who opened his second Five Guys Burgers and Fries uh, in the Prices Corner Shopping Center in January, is among them, uh, but knows it won't be easy. Smith is hoping the economic downturn that is driving consumers away from more expensive restaurants will push them into his eateries, something we were just talking about. Right. We've seen a healthy demand for us to continue to expand, he said, adding that he expects to open more restaurants in Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey this year. Delaware historically issues 8,000 to 12,000 new business licenses annually, said Patrick Carter, director of the state revenue office. Last year, when the recession began to take hold, there were over 12,000 new business licenses in Delaware. Hmm. Uh, um, More than 1,400 new license applications have been filed this year. Uh, If they have some talent, why not open your own business, he says. Experts also say it isn't necessarily bad to start a business during a recession, but warn budding entrepreneurs to figure out which ventures will survive. So on the franchising side, obviously do your due diligence and make sure it's the right. And, 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 you know, that's a question, I guess, when you're looking into a new franchise, uh, you know, whether it's recession-proof, you know, recession-resistant, how are uh, consumers going to want this service or product during these uh, tougher times? Mm Mm-hmm. Um, we also need to remember that when money is tight, people will look for bargains, uh, and that's the strategy behind Five Guys expansion. So he just talks about instead of someone going for a 15 to 17 dollar meal, that they can go get a nine dollar meal and a quality meal. Um, so hmm. I just thought I'd uh, something yeah, pretty interesting with backs up we were just talking about a little bit. Right. No. Absolutely. That's fantastic. All right, some good stuff. You know. So why don't we take a quick break, and we'll be right back with more franchise interviews. Franchise Interviews. For over two years now, Franchise Interviews has been giving you an up-close, behind-the-scenes look at franchising and entrepreneurship. Through our website, FranchiseInterviews.com, where you can hear and read interviews, as well as get tips from some of the most successful sources in franchising. And our weekly franchise radio show, where each week you get to hear a new interview with franchisors, franchisees, franchise authors, experts, and attorneys. And our free franchise newsletter, which is a must-read for anyone looking to buy a franchise. And don't forget to listen to our podcast, Great Quotes in Franchising. For more information, go to FranchiseInterviews.com or call us at 610-905-2919. That's 610-905-2919. Need a business loan? Talk to Diamond Financial Services, the experts in franchise financing nationwide. Whether you're looking to start a franchise, acquire an existing franchise, or expand your territory through opening new locations, Diamond Financial stands by your side start to finish. From pre-qualification to packaging and presenting your application to securing a financial commitment and through the loan closing process, Diamond Financial is there. While you're waiting, thousands of others are making their financial dreams come true. Don't wait any longer. Pre-qualify now by completing a confidential, no-obligation financial analysis. Let's face it, traditional banks just aren't in the business of financing small business. At Diamond Financial, we specialize in securing franchise loans from $100,000 to $3 million and equipment leasing up to $150,000. Let us help you get started. Go to www.franchisefunding.net or call 877-508-2274. That's franchisefunding.net, 877-508-2274.
Hi everyone, and welcome back to Franchise Interviews, where we're asking the franchise for Norman Walls one. I'm your host, Marty McDermott, with my co-host, Don Johnson, and if you've ever dreamed of owning your own business, then you've come to the right place. And as we were saying earlier, Don, we have a great show this morning. We've been waiting for this one for a while. We're meeting with David and Stuart Pykoff, the founders of the Games to You franchise opportunity. And David and Stuart launched the mobile video game theater franchise in Austin, Texas in 2007. And to date, they've sold more than 25 franchises. And they plan, this is pretty aggressive, they plan to open up 100 more by the end of 2009. So you talk about nice growth. Hey, guys, good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning, good morning. How y'all doing? Good, great, guys. Uh, guys, joining us is my co-host, Don Johnson. And I know, Don, you wanted to say hello to uh, uh, Stuart and uh, David. Thanks, Dave and Stuart. Appreciate you guys coming on. It must feel pretty good uh, to be spreading fun nationwide, huh? It's fantastic. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. It's, it's nice because, you know, you guys are actually, you know, we've been doing this show now for, you know, over two years. We've done 110 shows up to this point, and I don't think... Don and I were saying this morning that we, we, we've had siblings on the show at the same time, so we said we, we imagine we hope you guys get along well with each other. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we usually do, and if we don't, I just tell mom. There you go. <laughs> or just have one, or just have one brother hang up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Well, I guess I'll start off with, with either one of you. Um, you know, we always like to start off the show asking where our guests are calling from this morning. We are in Austin, Texas. Okay, great, great. And what were you guys doing before starting the Games to You franchise concept? Well, uh, this is Stuart. I came from a, a corporate background, uh, 13 years, vice president of a publicly traded housing company. Okay, good. And I was um, in the telecommunications business for a number of years. Me and a couple of gentlemen started a telecommunications company back in Dallas and sold that out uh, about five years ago and have been doing real estate development projects in and around Austin for about four or five years, and then we got started on Games to You. Okay, great. And that was David, right? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Okay, now I got the voices down. Now. That's good. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> David, tell us a little bit about how you started Games to You and a little bit of the history uh, over the last couple of years. Absolutely. So, you know, my brother Stuart and I had this this dream for a lot of years that we were going to do business together. We just, the timing wasn't right, and different things were going on in our lives, and so about two years ago, the timing just started to sync up beautifully for us, and so we said, now is the time, and we started doing a tremendous amount of research into franchising, and our objective was to buy a franchise and get two or three or five or ten locations, build it up, and sell it, and we looked around. We took probably six months. We did comprehensive research and looked at so many different things. We could not find anything that got us excited and motivated and really mm. pumped up to do it. So we pulled back, and we said, you know what, why don't we start something? Why don't we just make something from ground zero? And so we started honing in on children's entertainment. And, you know, Stuart and I are both lighthearted, fun guys. We both have kids. We were done with the corporate stuffy environment. We, <laughs> we decided, we, we came up with this motto, and we said, look, work should be all fun and games. Right. And so we um, set out to come up with an unbelievable party experience for kids' birthdays. We wanted the average kid to be able to have a party like a rock star for a very reasonable price. And so we first uh, we bought this Ford F-350, and our, our target audience, you know, we were, we were – we wanted it to be something so different and unique because it was just bounce houses and bowling parties and all that same kind of stuff that had been done and done and done for generations. So we wanted to do something so different. So we got a big Ford F-350, and we put a lift kit on it and side rails and hood scoops and flashing lights and these unbelievable graphics. Um, if you go to our website at gtu.com, you can see we've got all these pictures and videos. It's really cool. And we took a 32-foot gooseneck trailer and hooked it to the back of it. Again, put just unbelievable graphics around the vehicle. And we created a state-of-the-art video game theater. So on the inside, there's flat-screen TVs, unbelievable sound. There's laser light shows, fog machines. We've got TVs on the inside and the outside. We've also got outdoor laser tag, which is unbelievably fun. It, it blows away the indoor laser tag experience, and it's a great balance. And then we've also added a couple other cool things like 
these giant hamster balls that the kids do races in, and we've got these air cannons, which are modified T-shirt launchers. So we just have this unbelievable consumer proposition that uh, that is just driving kids crazy. And neither of you ever really had much of a background with this. You just thought upon this industry, and, and, and I think children's franchises. Uh, I mean, they're. I mean, a lot of them are very successful. I'm in franchise lending. Uh, you know, lenders like uh, that particular market. Mm-hmm. But you know, uh, but you didn't really have the background in it. It's just something that came upon you. You hit on it, and it, it just seemed like it would really work. Right? Um, I'm sorry. I think you dropped Stu. We. I think we lost Stu there. Uh, I was just mentioning, okay, David. Yeah, it it seems not. like you didn't have a background in this. Uh, type of service that you offer. It's just, it just, you know, you, would, you and Stuart came together and kind of thought this would be unique and, and interesting, but you, but you really had never done this in the past, right? Well, specifically in the children's entertainment segment, our experience was, as a parent, you know, our experience mm-hmm. was every year our kids' birthdays were coming up, and we said, ho-hum, what do we do? Is it the petting zoo, the magician, the bounce house, you know? And so from a consumer's perspective, we had a tremendous amount of experience. We were living it. Right. Um, and as business guys, you know, we had both been involved in businesses that, uh, you know, with my telecommunications company, I did business in 42 different states. And my brother with his, uh, in the building business, they did business in half of the country. So, you know, from a business perspective, it was a different product offering, but we, we had the business experience to grow and operate a business on a big scale and from day one our objective was to have a nationally franchised company we never had the intention of owning and operating two or three or five of these so we we put a few trucks on the road we owned and operated them for uh, six or eight months and we you know went through all the key learnings we built out all the operations manual we built a very sophisticated web-based software package which is all the management tools and everything you need to own and operate the business, and, and you know it's all 100% completely custom just for us. But it was all those things and all the legal registrations and all those kind of things that we went through um, during the six or eight month window, and then we started franchising. So that was we started the process back in late 2007, and then in March of last year is when we started franchising. And actually, I know you said 25 since. I guess we we gave you that information a couple weeks ago. We actually have 34 franchises sold, and we've got contracts out for – we've got about 60 pending right now. (laughs) Wow, that's incredible. And so, yeah, we expect in the next 30 to 60 days we will announce that we have reached 100 franchises sold. That's amazing, yeah. You said something interesting, Dave. You said, I, I, I like it would be a great tagline for you guys, is, you know, a party for a, a rock star experience, you know. It's just interesting. Weren't you, were you the guys, too? I, I think I've heard, um, did you guys do the Jonas Brothers party? I'm kind of out of my league when I'm talking about things like this, but, uh, but, but I'm definitely familiar with the name, though, you know, in Johnson, New Jersey. Yeah, we did. We, we have a franchisee um, in California, and we have been invited to be on, you know, the application here is, is pretty broad. The, mm. the, the core business is home birthday parties, right. but it expands well beyond that. We get paid to go to carnivals, festivals, fairs, church <laughs> events, corporate team building. And in the California area, we've been paid to come on to TV sets. I mean, the Wizards at wow. Waverly Place hired us to come on, and all the actors between shoots would come out. And it was a good tension release. And the right. Jonas Brothers deal, it's just... So, you know, it's just got – it's basically we go anywhere where people want to have a good time. That's amazing. That well, good what's the, uh, you know, the youngest that a child can be to, to really uh, enjoy everything? Well, it's, it's our core business is uh, 7 to 17. Okay. Um, so it, it, it goes a little bit lower than that, and it goes a little bit higher than that. But, you know, and, and with us, it is – we are not a video game company that is our platform it is our core and how people identify us with these these you know we have very specialized vehicles it's hard to miss it's a driving billboard when it's coming down the street there's no question what it is and it just puts a smile on your face it's just a cool looking vehicle and in there we have the -the state-of-the-art video game theater but that's just a portion of the consumer offering so especially with the younger kids it's really important um that we have other things. Otherwise, you can't. <clears throat> excuse me. You can't keep them stimulated, active, and excited for a two-hour party if you only if you're one-dimensional. So we have 
the outdoor laser tag. So we'll play in the video game theater and virtual world for a little while. Then we go outside and we set up this make-believe uh, battlefield s scenario, and the kids are playing outdoor laser tag. Then we do the hamster ball races. Then we fire off these air cannons, and at the end of the party, we'll, we'll turn it into a candy cannon, and we just shoot wow. it rains down oh. candy on everybody. So. Yeah, you could tell that by looking at the website. I'm on the website right now, David. You know, I mean, just I mean, even the van, you know, the the truck is is really is just very clever. You know, I mean, it's just a lot of thought went into to, to the whole thing. You know, so it really is incredible. Well, I appreciate that. We definitely wanted to have some shock and awe when we're pulling down the mm. street. You know, we uh, we want to be noticed. Yeah, I think Stuart's back. But uh, Stuart, are you back? I, I think we lost her for a second. Can you hear uh, me? Yeah, I can hear you now, Stuart. Yeah. All right. Uh. Yeah, David, so when you're describing the, the Games to You franchise system as children's entertainment or uh, to, to, to a new franchisee prospect, how do you really explain it to them in, you know, in just a few words? Basically, this is Stu again. Uh, basically, you know, we provide entertainment at their doorstep. Um, you know, we, we talk about a lifestyle. We talk to prospective franchisees, and, you know, there are so many folks, so many negative vibes going on out there, people – you know, getting laid off and, and cutbacks here and there. Right. And, you know, the truth is that people are looking for a lifestyle opportunity where it's, where it's fun again. Right. And so, you know, the, the franchisees get to you know, jump out of bed in the morning knowing that whenever they show up in an event, they can basically be guaranteed of the response. People are, their jaws are going to drop. Kids are going to be smiling. People are going to be going, this is the coolest thing ever. And it, you know, it, it really makes a difference in your world, you know, after getting beat up every day for, for years and years in a corporate environment or, you right. know, dread, you know, you dread going to work every day. It's really a nice change to be dealing with. You know, the only complaint we get typically is, "That's it, you're leaving." No, don't go yet. You know, so uh, it, it's really nice to kind of offer somebody a lifestyle that's a little bit more unique and fun. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, we're speaking with David and Stuart Pikoff of the Game CU franchise concept, and one of the questions uh, that we're recently been asking, uh, and I'll give this one to you, Stuart, is, is what role has technology played in your business? Well, for one, uh, you know, you're on our website, gtu.com. Mm -hmm. We are an Internet-based operating system. We have built an incredible proprietary system uh, that is completely Internet-based. Um, so it's a, it's a very, very intuitive, simple to understand, simple to teach system, but incredibly robust. So, for instance, you know, on the consumer side, uh, for our company, instead of trying to track somebody down on a cell phone or getting a voicemail or not being able to get through, it's very simple. Somebody logs on to our site, they go to gtu.com, mm. book a party, and our system automatically routes, by zip code, routes that to uh, the queue of the franchisee, um, gives them information, even if they're outside of an exact territory, it will lead them directly to uh, contact information on the closest Terri or territory to them, um, you know, and, and so it's a, a highly automated system that we accomplish by the Internet. And then on, on our side, um, on the back end of the system, franchisees, again, are accessing that information. Our operating system that's Internet-based is tracking, you know, all their scheduling components, um, all their data, you know, at a glance. Franchisee can, can tell you, you know, 62% of his business comes from th these three schools and, you know, boys, girls, ages. I mean, just all kinds of great information to help to manage your business and, you know, couldn't do it without, without doing this through the Internet. Exactly. Absolutely. That's interesting. How, and how big is the industry? Well, we'll, we'll tell you in a couple of years. Um, the, the truth <laughs> is uh, we were, we were uh, entrepreneur, I think it was uh, Entrepreneur Magazine, did an article in January that talked about uh, their projections for, I think it was the nine um, hottest segments for 2009, and one of them was children's entertainment. And basically right. they featured as that discussion was really about our company. <clears throat> and so, you know, the... Uh, the, the market is is untapped. It's an extremely underserved market. When you when you just step back and think about it in general, um, particularly the niche that we're in, boys seven to seventeen, um, completely underserved. Um, aside from you know bowling party or ice skating, I mean you know boys get to a certain point and it's just not cool you know to to, to invite your buddies and have a birthday party. Right. Um, this we got the cool factor back in the birthday business, and so it's it's. Com completely untapped and you know it's it's a multi-billion dollar business according to entrepreneur magazine that's fantastic and uh you know very reasonable total investment low investment size looks like uh 
uh, in the you know fifty to seventy thousand range to uh, you know to get into business. Uh, uh, so uh, you know during these tough economic times, uh, yeah, obviously uh, um, you know people might be leaning more towards the lower investment size franchises. So I know you guys have that going uh, for you. Uh, you know what happens when uh, 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 I guess you have to set up rain dates. What happens if uh, you know it's bad weather with, with this type of uh, you know, mobile type of uh, uh, business? What happens in that situation, guys? Well, that's it's a good question. Can you hear me again? Yes, I can hear you, David. Yeah. So um, it, that's a great question. We get asked that by consumers all the time. They're booking their party and they say, "Hey, just want to make sure. Do we have? What do we do for rain out?" Well. All of our systems are completely climate controlled. You go in the video game theater, it's got heat, it's got air conditioning, it's wow. out of the rain. Um, you know, we had a big event in Austin, Texas yesterday, and unusually it was cold and raining, but we had tons of kids there just laughing and having fun and, and playing in the heated uh, video game theater. Wow, good. Uh, so now uh, going on to the investor franchisee side, what types of characteristics do you look for in a franchisee? Now that you're growing and getting a little bit experience with that, what are you know some of the things you look for in, a, in, in an investor, guys? Uh, first and foremost, we look for somebody who gets it, who's emotionally attached and who's excited to be in this business. If you don't have that, if I can't hear you smile over the phone – when I do my pre-screening the first time I talk to you, then you're probably not a good candidate for our business. That truly is the most important thing. You've got to enjoy it. Beyond that, we want people who have some business acumen and that have some experience, and whether they've owned their own business or if they've worked for other small businesses and, and they understand the work ethic that it takes, and, and we give you all kinds of support. We've got full-time dedicated uh, franchise support personnel that help you. They coach, counsel, and mentor you to help you build your business every day to become wildly successful. Um, but you have to get out and do it. You know, they can. we come up with a game plan, um, but on a localized basis, you do have to – you've got to be willing to work. You've got to implement it and so you can enjoy the fruits of your labor. Something Marty and I stress all the time with franchise ownership. Uh, you know, it's not easy. It's hard work. Uh, but that that might make our great quotes in franchising. Uh, Marty, uh, yeah, well, need, need to hear yeah. you smile over the phone. It's so important, and it has been a common thing with a lot of franchises, you know. So, yeah, no, absolutely. And what's the training like, guys, for for your new franchisees once someone's decided to, you know, join the club? Um, how, do, how does the training work? Well, <clears throat> training both initially and ongoing are a huge part. You know, um, our our governing principle that we put up on the wall and we look at every day is to be the clear and obvious leader in our segment and to provide world-class franchise support. That is really what we just we pound into everybody in the organization on a daily basis. And so the way we there, – there's a lot of different ways that we provide that support. The first thing, as soon as somebody executes an agreement with us to become a franchisee, we have a two-hour quick start training program over the phone. So before they even come to classroom training in Austin, Texas, before they even have their vehicle, we teach and train them how they can begin to market their business and make money. There's no reason to wait while their vehicle is being manufactured. There's no reason to wait. They can start immediately. Then they come to Austin. We've got um, one full day of classroom training. Baby, can you come listen to this, please? I'm sorry? We've got... We've got a full day of classroom training. We've got a few days of field training. We, we go to parties, and we give them hands-on experience. After that, we typically have uh, their, the franchise support rep that is dedicated to them and their account typically goes into their market and spends a couple days with them and walks the walk and talks the talk and shows them firsthand in their market how do you become successful. And, uh, and then we just have continuing support. We have on a, on a monthly basis, every single franchisee calls in, and we have a best practices call. And the guy in Tampa just came up with some great promotion where he's getting tons of bookings and making a bunch of money, and he shares that with everybody in the group. And the guy in West Palm Beach and the guy in Beverly Hills and all across the country, everybody's sharing. And that's the power of the organization and the team. Right, sharing those uh... Great ideas on what's working. Yeah, definitely another advantage of franchising. Yeah, 
Right, no the question. best practices yeah, are so important. Yeah. Is, is this is not always the best question, uh, David and Stuart, but is there a typical day for like one of your franchisees? I imagine a lot of days are very different. A typical day in the life of being a franchisee? Yeah. Well, I, I can tell you most of their days are busy. They've got that in common. <laughs> That's good. Um, you know, the truth. The... Is our business is you know the the core of the business is kids birthdays so Friday Saturday Sunday is you know you can you can guarantee you need to rest up for Friday Saturday Sunday right. because you're going to be going nonstop um, typically our franchisees are you know booked out several months in advance um, for for weekend gigs um, so that's that's kind of a given uh, it's a very rapid ramp up and exponential growth is you know as soon as you start doing promotional events and getting out there in your in your new territory half the kids that attend those things want to want to have you for their party and half the kids that attend that so on and so forth so that builds quickly um, then the key that we focus on with them and, and work with franchisees on is that Monday through Thursday business and typically a lot of that's going to be commercial stuff and that again like David said you know we can provide the, the great system and, and just, you know, awesome opportunity for people, but we still need them ultimately to get out there and, and follow through. And so, you know, we'll, we'll guide them along that. We've got a fantastic marketing plan that they use, but, you know, they've got to get out there and they've got to do, you know, demos and be seen. You know, our vehicles by design are highly visible. They're, they're rolling billboards. So we want them on the, on the move all the time. We want them out in public so they get seen in their territory quickly. And, you know, they, they, they do the the businesses they work you know with with grand openings and customer and employee appreciation kind of events and things like that um, and you know uh, thus far we have seen extremely quick ramp ups and, and people starting to fill their uh, their calendars during the week which is uh, kind of the, the the balance to all of this is uh, use your core business that you got almost built in Friday Saturday Sunday and then work on building that that Monday through Thursday business it must be tremendous, uh, just word of mouth. Uh, once you do a couple parties, all those kids are probably going to want to do it again. So mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're it, talking to their mom about that's what they want their birthday party to be. So I imagine, uh, you, know, uh, you know, just a lot of that goes on, which is great for the franchisees. It is. It is. You know, they talk about word of mouth being the best advertising. We've got, you know, all these kids at school. They're wearing, you know, games to you wristbands that we give them and, and T-shirts and things, and they're spreading the word for us. Um, you know, man, I was at a games to you party this weekend. It was awesome. They're, yeah, that's what I'm doing for my birthday. And we, you know, we overhear those kind of conversations. So, uh, so it, it spreads quickly. Um, and, and yeah, let the, uh, the the kids do a lot of that marketing for us as after we get going. Yeah, and just that truck pulling up alone, you know, like in a neighborhood. I mean, it's just it's such a great promotional. I, I think you've probably seen it, Don, too, when, if you're on the, the website, you know, but just driving from point A to point B. I mean, it just really stands out. You right. know, talk about a nice uh, promotional billboard. I mean, that, that truck is very powerful, I think. And you guys are right. Uh, you know, my wife and I are, are planning my twins who were five birthday party, and sometimes there's not a whole lot of choices. So you guys better make sure that you're in Monmouth County, New Jersey, in two years when they turn seven, all right? <laughs> we'll be there. We'll right. be there. That's something. Uh, yeah, uh, Dave, I wanted to ask, you've been in franchising for, for a little while, of course. Uh, it kind of goes to our other question about characteristics, but what would you give to an aspiring entrepreneur looking to buy a franchise, whether it's games to you or just franchising in, in general? What advice would you give to them? Well, I truly, I, I really believe that first and foremost, you have to have passion. You've got to be excited. It can't be that you're looking for a paycheck. Mm. You have to be genuinely excited and motivated to do what it is you're doing. And, you know, if, if you, you find something you, you, know, you love to do, mm. and it's not even work. It just right. it, you enjoy it so much, and that's how it is with us. You know, our business, at the end of the party, for the first six or seven or eight months, when we were running parties, at the end of the party, the kids would come up, and hug your leg and say, oh, my God, that was the greatest party ever. Please don't go. And if you don't feel rewarded and get satisfaction out of that, then right. this isn't for you. And you got to find the business that gives you that rush, that gives you that excitement. Because if you have that, the motivation, the excitement to get up and work the business every day just comes naturally. And so that that's really the, the most important thing. Businesses take time energy and effort and uh it's consistency it's long-term consistency you can't get in and and burn out real quick like a roman candle you got to get in there and there is some 
some stuff that you got to do, you know, continually on a weekly basis to keep, you know, grinding it out and make your business big and grow and be profitable. So you, you got to love what you do. Yeah, and, well, and here's just to back that up. I'm reading some of the testimonials you have on the website saying everything was perfect. My son would love to have games to you every year for his birthday. It was amazing. Our kids absolutely love playing the games, and I'm sure they're passing that on to the franchisee. So, yeah, it must be great hearing uh, that uh, those type of uh, quotes. Every i got to say, those, we, we send out our system. That's one of the things our system does is it sends out automated customer surveys to every single person within 24 hours after they've had a party or event with games to you. Well, when we were putting those up, I, I literally, I mean, we've got thousands of surveys, and I just picked the first ten. They're all the same. It was, my son said it was the greatest party he ever had. It was a phenomenal experience. Right. Never had anything like it. And it is. It's just genuinely unique. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, those. Uh, you're right. I'm, I'm looking at them. The, the word perfect and amazing is used like every other sentence. Yeah. We hear it all the time. We really do. It's you know, it's it's parents. You're living it. You got kids. You know, and it's right. it's challenging to try to come up with something fun and unique. And and, uh, exactly. and we have it. And frankly, with the recession, you know, I would never be so bold as to say that we are recession proof. However, I do hear from all our franchisees that we are recession proof. Thank God I've gotten in this business, Dave. This is awesome. That kind of thing. Because, you know. People are cutting back. They're cutting back on vacations. They might not buy True. new clothes as often as they normally do. They might not buy that new car. But you are not going to steal your child's childhood birthday memories for a couple hundred bucks. Yeah, right. You know, you, yeah. It's so emotional. It's so powerful. Your kids, you always want the next generation to have it better. And, frankly, when you do an at-home party, it's less expensive because you can put burgers and hot dogs on the grill you know, you don't get get dinged with all those prices of buying food and right. spend another couple hundred bucks on pizzas and whatever out of the out of the Chuck E. Cheese kind of place. Yeah, it's an excellent point. I like the uh, uh, the investment size aspect, being a mobile based franchise, uh, having lower overhead. Someone mm-hmm. starting out in business, which is so crucial. A lot of businesses don't end up surviving because of not having enough cash flow. But your business being a low overhead, not having to lease spaces, uh, is definitely a plus. Well, you know, when, when David and I uh, thought and, and searched for an opportunity and, and the right niche to be in, um, there were a number of things in, in our investigation that, that led us to think, you know, we know what we don't want. We don't want expensive real estate. We don't want, you know, build-outs. We don't want inventories. We don't want, you know, a, a year to, to try and get open. We don't want to have to, to staff, you know, a location when you, right. the business may not be there. You know, and, and so... All these kind of pieces, you know, pushed us toward this thought process. Pushed us toward a mobile concept, right. and you know, the, you're not you're not moving, and you're not you don't have staff, and you're not doing anything unless you have an event booked, unless you're going to make money, and so it's it's kind of a unique approach uh, without having fixed overhead um, at times that locations aren't really generating revenues. So, uh, you know, conceptually, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a more ideal situation. You can kind of trim down your overhead costs. Um, fixed tend to be low, and, and for the most part, you know, you, you're operating w- when you have revenues coming in. Yeah, Good point. Yeah. Model. What, what are your, your plans for the future for the Game CU franchise opportunity, David and Stuart? How you know, you our, our hope and dream is that, you know, we're in every city in America and that every kid at some point during his formative years that, that Games to You is a birthday party that they have. And you know, one year they will do a Chuck E. Cheese kind of party, and one year they will do a bounce house kind of party, and, and one or two or three years they'll do us. We want to be part of the fabric of children's entertainment, and we really want to be out there in, in every community in America. And we've got we've got a lot of momentum. We've got great, great people on our team, strong franchisees to build from and, and use as a launch pad. And you know, we've got we are so committed to. Um, continually enhancing the consumer proposition to get that natural buzz going. And, you know, as soon as we, we have a franchisee sets up in Dallas and he goes and does five parties, and within a week we're getting people in the Dallas area saying, I want to buy a franchise, I want to buy a franchise. My son went to the party. It's unbelievable. It's, I've never seen anything like it. And so now, so like after two months of having one franchisee in Dallas, now we've got three. And so, and it's, so we get that organic growth. 
We, uh, you know, my brother and I work the business 724. We are passionate about it. We will continue to put out the time and effort and, and work the business as we do. Um, we want to. We really are committed to world class franchise support. We want all our franchisees to be wildly successful, and and it's. Number one, it's just because it's our business, and, and we take it very seriously. So people have a lot of choices out there, and when they choose to come on board with us, it's a big deal to be part of the Games to You family. We, we take it very seriously, and so we're committed to doing everything and anything possible. And frankly, from a business perspective, it just makes sense because then as they get cranking, they come back after a couple months and they go, mm, I'm ready to buy a second, and, and how about a third? And so you get that growth from within the organization, and they take – less support and training because they're already expert operators. We are starting to execute a couple um, in strategic places where we're uh, executing a couple of area developer agreements. Then we do Internet marketing. So we've got, you know, we've got a multitude. It's, it's this multifaceted uh, growth plan that we have, and it's, it's not any one thing that we're resting on. It's just putting out effort in, in these five or six different key categories that continue to accelerate the growth. And we expect it looks like we're on pace to, to sell um, between two and three, it might be a little bit higher than that, but between two and three hundred um, franchises this year. Wow, that's incredible. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's just even amazing, David, how in the intro <laughs> to the show this morning, I was talking, you know, saying that you guys had 25 franchises, and from when I last spoke to you, now you're up to, was it 30 plus, you know, I mean, it's just well, those, those were last week's, those were last week's notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, so I can't even keep up, you know, so I, I, I know when we have, and Don and I are definitely going to have you guys back on the show towards like the end of the year or early next year you know it'll just be amazing to just watch you guys continue to grow and i'm very confident you guys are gonna as, as you say be in every city in the united states it really is a, an incredible franchise model you know so uh yeah so what's what's the best way to for our listeners to get more information on your franchise opportunity uh, really, the best way to keep up with us and get a, a tremendous amount of detailed information on the franchise opportunity is go to our website. It's g2u.com. So it's the letter G, the number two, letter U, g2u.com. And there's a franchise section there um, that, that details, our, you know, it's got screenshots of our operating system, uh, talks about a lot of things we've reviewed today, um, you know, best, best things about our franchise, you know, uh, what, what makes it great, talks about uh, the training and support and operating system and all that kind of stuff. So G2U.com is uh, easily the best thing for them to look at. Yeah, it's an incredible website, by the way, too. I mean, just very, very informative, you know. And uh, I want to thank both of you again for coming on this show this morning. You guys were incredible guests, and I know Don and I both would love to have you back in the near future. We'd love cool. to. We appreciate it, fellas. Thanks. Our pleasure. Yeah, and, uh, we, we'd love to plan on doing the twins' birthday. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> Thanks, David. Right. You guys have a great day today. Thank you. Too. Dude, take care. Bye. Great show, huh, Don? Yeah. I mean, uh, great franchise model. I mean, as they were talking, you know, it's just. Uh, I, I mean, I have no fun. doubt that they're going to just have a lot of success with this. A lot yeah, of positives. I, I totally agree. You know, and uh, so yeah. So for our listeners, go to franchiseinterviews.com. Go franchise.com franchisefunding.net and next week we have another incredible show and uh, we'll see everybody also in Washington D.C. Uh, next weekend Don and I will both be there right. and uh, what else Don? Well we look forward to the show we got great shows coming up uh, go to our show page as well on Blog Talk Radio see all of our in- interviews as well as franchiseinterviews.com good job Marty good job Don I'll talk to you next week take care take care When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can seem intense. Like, breakup R&B intense. I thought you said you loved the sweater that I got you. If you didn't, you could have told me. Geico makes it easy. Just go to Geico.com anytime to update or check your policy. Without all the extra drama. I even had a gift. Wendy's Frosty is something special. And for a limited time, a Frosty is just 50 cents. An American classic for a classic price. It's not quite a milkshake, not quite an ice cream cone. It's definitely chocolate or vanilla. That choice is on you. 
Use a spoon or a french fry. Anything goes. A Frosty makes summer special. Yep, there's nothing quite like a Frosty. And there's nothing quite like this deal. A Frosty for 50 cents. Get yours before this deal melts away. Small Frosty at participating Wendy's for a limited time. 